I really enjoyed the video about my trip to London, and perhaps some of you did too. So I thought it would be nice to do something similar here in Stockholm and to visit some of the old locations where ABBA were. Some of the studios where they recorded their songs and albums, the places where they had their photographs taken and where they shot their videos. So let's go! I want to start really at the beginning in the studio where Ava recorded songs for their first four albums. It's the Metronome Studios and it's somewhere here. Just so we get an idea of the ambience to feel where Ava were back in the day to arrive at the recording studio, these are the surroundings. When you turn around at this corner, it is number 57. They recorded many songs for their first album, Ring Ring Here, also songs for their third album, ABBA, and the entire Waterloo and Arrival albums. This is where they came and went. And they were actually filmed here the only time showing ABBA during actual recording sessions, so it was inside this building where they were filmed when they recorded Dance and Queen. And in fact, just a few months ago, Björn and Benny came back to this very place and Benny played a little of that song. In 1998, there was a one-hour documentary on Swedish TV with Björn and Per from Roxette about this studio. They walked this way and then inside the studio and today you can still feel their spirits. Many artists were here, including Quincy Jones, but also Charlie Norman, who we know from his connection with Frida. In the 60s, virtually every Swedish artist recorded at Metronome Studios, including Agneta and Frida for their solo recordings, as well as Björn with his band The Hootenanny Singers. And this is actually where he met Michael Vitretto for the first time, who of course later became ABBA's ingenious engineer. It was also in this studio where in the 70s Björn and Benny recorded with Ted Jerestad, Lena Andersson, and in 1975 Frida recorded her solo album and some and her backing vocals for Harpo's Movie Star. Movie Star, oh movie star, oh The building was actually a cinema in the first place many decades ago. And today the studio is called Atlantis Studios. This is where Agneta recorded her two most recent albums, My Coloring Book and A, and where she was also filmed for some of the music videos. And it was also in this studio where Benny reunited with some of Abba's old studio band in 2007 to record the soundtrack for Mamma Mia the Movie. Lots of history here, building which brought us many shining hours of music. But there is another studio even more iconic in Abba's legacy, and it's not too far away from here. Let's go there. Here it is, Abba's very own Polar Music Studios. Well, at least that's where it once was. The building is still there, but the studio was closed in 2004, and today there is a gym. But look at this, from here you have a most beautiful view. Okay, so this gym is really strange. I just sneaked through the window and saw some very odd scenes. Look at that. What's going on there? 
These facilities also used to be a cinema, and there was also a swimming pool inside. But then the studio opened in 1978, the first ABBA song recorded here was Summer Night City, and they would record the next three studio albums at Pola. They would also film interviews here and record two of their music videos, Gimme Gimme Gimme, A Man After Midnight, and the Spanish version of I Have a Dream, Estoy Soñando. In the 80s we also got to see more from inside the studio and the recording sessions of Björn and Benny's musical Chess, as well as Frida's solo album Something's Going On, and Agneta's first two English language solo albums, which were all recorded here. There were also many famous international artists here at Polo Studios, from Led Zeppelin and Genesis to Celine Dion, Alice Cooper, the Rolling Stones and many others. And in 1996, Frida returned to Polar Studios for her most recent solo album. And one of the last albums recorded here was the second album for Benny Anderson's orchestra. So these studios really are the equivalent to the Beatles' Abbey Road Studios. So it's even a bigger shame that today it no longer exists. But we can still go there and remember the outside facade. That's what we usually associate anyway when we think of Polar Music Studios, when the fans were waiting outside back in the day just to get a glimpse of ABBA when they arrived in the morning and came out in the evening. Were you one of those fans? Let me know in the comments below. Here we are at Stockholm's Concert House, Concerthuset. After we explored where ABBA recorded their songs in the studio, I wanted to get some live experience as well. So this is where they played one of their concerts in January 1975. We talked about that tour in a little documentary recently, one of my favorite videos. And here we are, if you listen very carefully, you can still hear Abba rocking away in those concert halls. This was in fact the concert where, as Björn recalls it, the worst moment of his life in the music business happened. And it was during King Kong's song when Agneta of Frida started singing too early and half the band followed her, the rest followed Benny, and after a while it was just chaos and they didn't even properly finish the song. Everyone just stopped playing, one after the other. And to Björn's point, it didn't help that all of their colleagues and the press were in the audience. And you know what? I'd love to have seen that. <laughs> it's just so human after all, and who knows? Maybe some of them thought interesting song and arrangement. They are so creative. Anyway, this is where it happened. One of ABBA's concerts of their otherwise gorgeous 1974-1975 tour. And seven years later, in 1982, they returned to this area because just around the corner, down the street, they filmed scenes for one of their final music videos. Let's go there. This is the door where Frida went out and slipped in the video for Head Over Heels. Oh, there she comes. And take a look inside. You can see the door in the hallway exactly like in the music video. Well, that's the door. And just across the street, you can find the staircase where Frida went up and down in the very same video. This is where she came down. So this was what she was seeing from her perspective. You can see the door across the street and then she went up again. Let's follow her lead and we will see how close many of these other locations are. Because if we go up the stairs and down the road, we will find Alexandra's discotheque. Oh, 
here we are. And of course today Alexandra's disco is no longer here. It looks like it is a private school nowadays. And in fact, on my way here, basically really opposite to this place, I saw another school, the Stockholm International School, which is of course from which ABBA had children singing for their studio recordings of I Have a Dream and most recently for ABBA's Christmas song Little Things. So anyway, this here is where they filmed the music video for Dancing Queen and where they also returned in 1979 to shoot photographs for Voulez-vous. They came and left here and again just to give us an idea of the surroundings. Well, this is where they were. And for our final stop for today, I want to go to Joe Gordon now, the island and basically a big public garden of Stockholm. There are many places around Joe Gordon directly connected to ABBA. Today I want to start here in this very idyllic, beautiful area. It's always beautiful to be here no matter what. It's beautiful in the summertime, but also in the autumn. Look at this photograph that I took in the autumn. Anyway, why are we here? This is where they filmed scenes for ABBA the movie. It was this canal and this exact spot here where the boat passed by with ABBA. You can still see the broken water from the boat. Oh look! There they are! In the film you can see these reporters chasing them, which happened on that road next to the canal. And right behind there is a large meadow. Let's go there. So I highly assume it was this meadow where they filmed further scenes for Abba the movie. Why would they travel too far away with the film crew and everything? So it makes sense that they just went along with the surroundings. This was very efficient filmmaking. And they were definitely here for one photograph of Benny and Frida, which was shot in front of this very tree. I think they actually took the photograph from the other side of the tree, which would be this perspective with a street in the background. On our way here, it is very likely that this railing here is where Agneta was photographed. And when we turn around, there is another place where Abba once was, way back in time. Let's go there. Again, you see sometimes these locations are so close to each other. This is the famous canopy that we know from the artwork of Abba's very first single. People need love. It was in fact their very first photo session ever, but it was taken long before the song was even recorded. These photos were taken in September 1970, even long before they knew what would lie ahead for them. They were basically just four friends during that time, touring around Sweden for cabaret shows for a period of time. And from this very first ABBA song, I would love to go to their final recording, well, for 35 years that is, and visit some of the filming locations for the music video of The Day Before You Came. But that's it for today. Of course, there are so many more ABBA locations in and around Stockholm, even here in New Gordon. So if you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comments below. I want to give huge thanks to the wonderful Sarah Russell who has an amazing website, abbaontv.com, which collects all the information and tidbits about virtually every television appearance ever done by ABBA and the members until this very day, but who also published her book, The ABBA Guide to Stockholm, a few years ago, which really is the ultimate travel guide and which was a great foundation for this video. It's very comprehensive. Many thanks also to Raffan.com, who has a detailed website with photographs, histories and also sections about other related places. And also deep thanks to all the other people who collected all of this information over the years, including the folks from 
Northern Lights Production in Australia, who put together a documentary in 1998 traveling to Stockholm and even visiting the Polar Music Studios with Michael Mitretto. And finally, thank you to all of you for watching and for just being here. All right, until then, hey-do!